Am I the a-hole update? Am I the a-hole for telling my girlfriend she ruined my night by insisting she comes along? Update. So the majority vote was not the a-hole, with a few you're the a-hole votes sprinkled in. A lot of people were genuinely mad at me for being in that kind of a relationship which didn't make sense. But what can you do? Another thing I want to address, a lot of people kept saying no means no and stick with it when you say no. I want to reiterate that that does not work with Jane in the scenarios. She would show up no matter what or manipulate me into coming home or giving her the address. I got some good advice and used it to my best ability. I also feel I owe everyone an explanation as to why I was dating Jane. First, my parents were in a very toxic relationship all throughout my childhood. They despised each other but refused to divorce or even move out for the benefit of the kids. Clearly, that didn't work. Second, Jane's behavior wasn't always so toxic. But once she started to act how my parents did to each other, my dumb brain associated that with love. I know now that is not the case, but Jane was my first real relationship. The first was a few months that ended with me being cheated on. I sat Jane down and explained that I feel sad by the double standard between her friends and mine. I expressed that I have no idea why she's so possessive and insists on coming to every party. Then she said something I was not prepared for. I can't trust that you won't go and fuck anyone wills out because you're bisexual. She went on to explain that she finds many of my friends attractive and I assume I did too and so projected her own attraction onto me and became jealous and possessive. She also said there's a 50% extra chance you'll cheat on me because you swing both ways. I brought up some issues with how she conducts herself and she began crying and gaslighting me. Actually, gaslighting. But I stood my ground. As for why she's so possessive, in her own words, she's just is and does it because she loves me. I was shocked. I needed time to cool down and think but I made a decision to break up with Jane. I don't want any biphobia in my life. I told her as such but she did not take it well. As I was calling one of my friends, I noticed all my cash from my purse around 100 pounds was missing along with my card that has since been sorted. She got very angry when I called her out and I left for my own safety. I'm currently staying at my friend's house. Jane didn't want to leave and it was getting dicey. But I called the cops and they removed her. But I didn't feel safe being home alone after all that. I also apologized to my friend and she said it was fine. She was just happy I'm out of the relationship. This friend is ride or die as I am for her. I asked if she, my friend, would dump me as a friend if I continued to be with Jane and she said, Absolutely not. What kind of asshole friend would I be? Who does that? So yeah, a sort of happy ending thanks to everyone who gave me good advice. Now for the top comments. Here is a comment from a book a day 131 Jesus I'm glad you're safe and have such an awesome friend you can count on here's another comment from melodic yak 7196 ditto I have actually been thinking about you and your dilemma and I'm so glad with your decision good luck in the future a comment from material cellist 4133 I am so happy for you that you recognize it was a toxic relationship I also recommend maybe talking to a friend or a therapist about your childhood and relationships. When I got out of a toxic relationship, it really helped me. It made me understand my value as well as what I should have in a healthy relationship. I believe it may help you grow and hopefully find a healthy relationship to be in. Another comment from Anstev1 As someone who had crap examples of what love was growing up, 
I can't recommend this enough. I was in a similar situation and well, it went down the same way. Forget Jane, no one needs that. And here's another comment from Bywater Bender. I'm so sorry that you had to deal with biphobia from another member of the community on top of her other toxic behavior. As a fellow bi, it is so disheartening that we still have a hard time being accepted. Not gay enough for the gays, not straight enough for the straights. Being bi, pan, queer, etc. does not mean you're going to be a cheater, or you're confused, or polyamorous, or deceptive. Like, no one immediately assumes those things about one gender orientations. Congrats on getting out of that relationship, and I wish you the best of luck moving forward and continue growing and heal from your past experiences. Your friend sounds like an amazing person and I'm glad you have her. Here's another comment from Pillow Crates. Seriously, and then you have the lesbian that think you're basically insane for ever finding a guy attractive, actively hate you for liking men. Which I get feels honored and not get enough for the gays, but it's such a weird subset within it that baffles me. Now for the next story. Am I the evil for wanting my daughter's boyfriend, soon to be fiancé, to know her dark secret before marriage? I'm the dad of a 25-year-old young woman who I love very much. I've been able to have a good relationship with my daughter and I enjoy my time with her. But there's one thing about her that would give many people pause. She is a diagnosed sociopath. She exhibited odd disturbing behavior at a young age and after a serious incident of abuse towards her young sister i realized she needed professional help throughout her elementary years she struggled heavily getting in lots of trouble in school for lying cruelty and all other types of misbehaviors with an enormous amount of therapy and support her bad behavior was minimized as she grew older. She received an ASPD diagnosis at 18, and I had suspected it for a long prior. After her aggressive behavior was tamed, her following years were so much more fruitful. She's law-abiding, has a decent job and a good education, and has many good friendships and admirers. Especially male admirers, she is very, very charming and adept at attracting guys and maintaining their interest. She uses that old dating guide, the rules, like a Bible. She currently has a boyfriend of about a year and a half who's crazy about her and who I have a very strong relationship with. We live in the same area and spend time together regularly. He is a great guy, very kind, funny, and intelligent. But I doubt she loves him. We've had some very honest, in-depth discussions about her mental health since her diagnosis. And she has been open with me that she doesn't feel love or empathy towards anyone, even family. When she acted very sad and broken up over the death of one of her closest friends at the funeral, she confessed to me privately that it was all a put on and that she felt pretty neutral about the whole thing. She has also stated she has never once felt guilty about anything she's ever done and doesn't know what guilt feels like. While she enjoys being around her boyfriend and is sexually attracted to him, I highly doubt she feels much of anything towards him love-wise. Her boyfriend, who might propose soon, has no idea about her diagnosis, and she's been very upfront with me that she has no plans to ever tell him, thinking it'll scare him away. I've made it clear to her that she needs to tell him the truth before they marry, that he has a right to know and consider it, or I will. To which she always responds, I know you wouldn't dare. I actually would. I really like and respect this young man, and I would feel awful keeping this secret from him and letting him walk into a marriage without this piece of knowledge. I'm not trying to sabotage my daughter's future. Maybe her boyfriend's love of her personality and other aspects is enough that it won't end a relationship. 
It's his decision to make. But he deserves all the facts. Someday, he's bound to find out she's a bit off. It can't be kept a secret forever. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. From you, my. I think the guy needs to know, deserves to know. But what if it does destroy the relationship? I can't imagine what it could mean for Opie to have his sociopath daughter be very angry at him. Damn, Opie. I'm so sorry. Not the a-hole, but I don't know if you should follow through with telling him or not. Here's another comment from J.C.A. Ashby. Opie, to have his sociopath daughter be very angry at him. Does a sociopath even get angry? I have no clue. Here's another comment from MD Me Librarian. I just googled it for us. However, they do experience proto-emotions, primitive emotions that rear their ugly heads in moments of perceived need. The sociopath is quite capable of intense anger. Sociopath M. E. Thomas 2013 describes suddenly experiencing a flash of anger that then lives as quickly as it arrives. She doesn't forget what angered her. Instead, her rage morphs into a sense of calm purpose. Here's another comment from Candy Canes. I understand empathy and compassion a bit more than Opie's daughter because I am only borderline. But I wouldn't say that I feel then as strongly as most people. Yes. I do wish I could feel more empathetic and compassionate towards others especially when they expect it. Honestly, I just cannot give them as much compassion or empathy as they deserve.